today I'm reviewing the Hexgears X1. This is a backlit, Bluetooth, wireless, low profile mechanical keyboard. This has Kale's PG1350 chalk white, chalk brown, or chalk red switches in it. So you have click, tactile, or linear switches. The Bluetooth functionality allows you to connect up to four devices. Not all at the same time, obviously, but you can switch between them with one, two, three, or four. There's four slots. Worked reliably up until the point I wanted to switch my computer from slot two to slot one. Then it was kind of weird and it didn't really work. So then I just plugged it in. There's a switch on the back so you can turn it on and off. With the backlighting on, the battery life, according to them, should last about four hours. With the backlighting off, you're gonna get about three months, so there's a huge difference there. I don't have three months to review this. I reviewed it over the course of two weeks. During those two weeks, I plugged it into my desktop computer for the most part. The case is aluminum. They have a black version or a silver version. The silver version has white keycaps. If you are wary of any grease or oils, I would go with the silver white version because the black, the matte black keycaps do tend to pick up some of that finger grease. On the back, you're gonna have a little bit of plastic here. You'll also see four rubber feet, so it doesn't slide around on you, and two flip out feet that also have a little bit of rubber on that as well. Flip out feet add a quarter of an inch. So the thinnest point is a half an inch, the thickest point is three quarters of an inch, and with the flip out feet, you get a full inch in height. Otherwise, the dimensions are 14 inches by five inches. So about the same size as a regular 10 keyless keyboard. But the cool thing about this layout is that you don't lose out on that 10 key because the 10 key is right here on the right side. They did tweak a few things to make it fit, such as the fact that they put a num key key right here instead of a zero key. That took a little bit of getting used to. It also doesn't have a vertical enter key. I kind of miss that a lot because you have to reach over and hit this enter key. But if they did have that, they'd have to widen the keyboard. And there's always give and take with unique layouts like this. You also have a function key right here. They labeled it the fun key, which I thought was pretty funny. Ha <laughs> ha. But I wish there were two of them because it would be nice if they had another fun key on the right side so that I can access my navigational keys underneath these arrow keys, like the home end, page up, page down with just my right hand, and that way not all function layer keys would require both of my hands. Also on the function layer, you'll have some backlighting control. You can put your computer to sleep. You can lock your Windows key. There's media control, so play, pause, reverse, forward, mute, volume down, volume up, and then you can change your display brightness if your display supports it. There's also insert color, so there's seven different colors to choose from for backlighting, which I'll get to in a moment. There's pause, print screen, and then backlighting brightness control. As always, don't forget the navigational keys right there. Great for when I'm writing. There's also an option to switch between USB mode or wireless mode, so that way you can charge it while it's still in wireless mode. And don't forget your Bluetooth device switching right here. Type-C port is right here on the back for charging or for wired mode. In wireless mode, you have six key rollover. In wired mode, you have unlimited key rollover. Only thing that I thought was a little weird was that there was just a tad bit of input lag on both wired and wireless modes. It didn't really seem to matter what mode you were in. Other than that, let's talk about the switches because that makes this keyboard kind of what it is. It wouldn't be low profile without the switches. So these switches are Kale PG1350 switches. This particular keyboard has chalk whites. This is the disappointing part of the keyboard for me, and I have to take a sip of tea. The chalk whites, the actuation point is just a hair past the click. So my hands would be typing away, and my hands would think that the key actuated when it really hasn't. So I'd find myself typing away and missing a lot of keystrokes that I should have been getting.
this unfortunately had the kind of a bad effect of forcing my hands to bottom out most of the time. So it put a lot of strain on my fingers and it was uncomfortable. It was especially prevalent in the big keys with the stabilizers, like the shifts, the space bar, the backspace key was an issue as well. When I was gaming, I'd hit the left side of the space bar because I'm using my left hand and I'd miss the keystroke because the stabilizer didn't work properly. Now they did make this keyboard with two other switch options. So you could try the chalk brown or the chalk red, which are gonna be lighter switches. These are the heaviest switches. So those switches, chances are, are not gonna have that issue. I would just steer clear of the chalk whites, check out those switches instead and give them a try. I don't think they're gonna have the issue because they're so much lighter and they don't even have a click. So I'm really hoping that those switches are a lot better. I, I think they will be. Other than that, let's talk about the backlighting. There are several different modes. You can get through them by pressing function plus spacebar. So just go ahead and turn it on. The switch on the back, see the boot up sequence is white. And then this is our first mode. This is our rainbow wave. The next one is a fade in and out. On this mode, you can go through the colors, seven different colors to choose from there. Our next mode is a reactive mode. Our next mode, whoops. Our next mode is a color cycle mode. Then we have sort of this, I'm gonna call it rainbow bloom. It just goes crazy when you're typing. And then finally we just have everything on. Again, you can go through the colors here. And off. Last but not least, we do have a mode that allows you to select which keys are lit up. So we can go ahead and press function plus F1. So I already set this up before it was on WAS and the arrow keys. So to begin, you just press function plus F1 for five seconds. These three lights are gonna start blinking, and then F1 is gonna denote what color you're using. So to select your color, you press function plus eight once again, cycle through the colors. By the way, this is the only way to select white as an option, because the other modes where all the LEDs are on don't even have white as an option. But anyway, let's just choose an accent color here. That looks nice that you can tell on camera. Purple, purple and white. So now that purple is selected, we just go ahead and click every key that we want lit up. <laughs> then when you're done, you press function plus off, counterintuitive, and then press function plus F1 again. Then when we press it again, it's gonna turn on and it's gonna be our mode with all of the LED lights on. Keep in mind, you can't make custom hues, but at least you can select which ones are lit up. There's no software planned. And in fact, on the Kickstarter, even Hexgears commented saying that it would require a complete PCB redesign for software to be made to allow this functionality. So no custom backlighting, you're just kind of stuck with the feature set as it is. It's just kind of unfortunate because if they made software, they could also include programming in that software. And that would be a great feature that I think a lot of people would enjoy as well. Because as it is right now, there's no open source firmware or anything to be able to change the layout to your liking. But other than that, um, the backlighting looks great. As you can see, the key switches have a clear housing that diffuses the light. So it's very bright, vibrant, and it's probably some of the best backlighting I've seen, to be honest. It kind of reminds me of the Razer Blade backlit keyboard. You also have backlighting adjustment, forgot to mention that. You can, there's four levels of brightness and off. One little tiny, little, little, little tiny nitpicky thing. When it is in wireless mode and the backlighting is on, when I don't have my headphones on, very very subtle not gonna bother like 99% of people but I just noticed it it's kind of like a little coil wine
So to sum it all up, build quality is great. Aesthetically, it looks awesome. I think we can all agree on that. Slim profile keyboards just kind of look cool. And the fact that it is so stealthy, black, RGB backlit, and multi-device Bluetooth functionality is a great feature as well. I wish Kale had improved these key switches just a little bit more, made them lighter, made them actuate at the correct moment in time as you're clicking the switch so that your hands and fingers don't get mixed up. But give the chalk browns a try, give the chalk reds a try. Maybe they, maybe those are gonna be a lot better. So if you'd like to pick up this keyboard, you can check out the Kickstarter. It is running until August 23rd, and this was sent to me for review. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for... And as always, please rate, comment, and subscribe. I forgot to mention two little things. They're tiny, tiny things. They include a very nice braided cable that is gold-plated and Type-C. And uh, they're also going to be including a case for this keyboard, which is also pretty sweet.